Hi, I'm Jennifer. Welcome to my first art video. I'm a graphic designer, photographer, video producer, artist, a creative jack of all trades. I have never ever completed a sketchbook in my life. I've never taken one seriously enough to get past maybe five pages in a sketchbook. I have a ton of them just laying around everywhere, but I've never finished one. And lately I've been really busy with work. I work part-time for one company as a primarily as a graphic designer and video producer and photographer. And I have multiple other clients that take up the rest of my spare time. So I don't get a lot of time to spend on art. I used to produce a lot of art and in the last two years, I haven't had the time. I've been, I was overworked and missing the art life. So I opted for 2021, you know, new year. Like let's, let's start a sketchbook. I have so many laying around, let's use one. So that's what you see here. And this current sketchbook, of which maybe in the future I'll do a sketchbook tour of the previous spreads because as you can see by looking, I'm a good way through the sketchbook already. Uh, not quite halfway, but this is the most progress I've ever made a sketchbook. And the whole sketchbook's theme is plants because like a lot of people in this pandemic, I got really into plants. It was nice to have green things and see something grow and it's, it's rewarding. So I had enough of them that I wanted to start documenting what I had and I figured what, I mean, I, originally I started like using an app, take pictures, track the growth, and then I was like, this seems really, for one, tedious. And two, it's like, if I'm gonna put this much time into something, why don't I draw them? And I had gotten gifted the full set of the Prismacolor Premier colored pencils for Christmas. Which is something I've wanted, but I, I don't have much experience with colored pencils at all. I, I played around with them when I was in like middle school or high school, but it wasn't something that really clicked with me. I was a strictly Bic mechanical pencil and printer paper kind of gal in my early art career. And I didn't really branch out a whole lot from that, but in the recent years, I started doing oil painting, port acrylics, things like that. I really love oils, really do, but they're not really conducive for smaller projects, quick projects. Like the drying time takes forever. And I was looking for something that I could still blend, not quite the same, but still blend with, but could create something quickly and decided, you know, I have these colored pencils, I have a fancy-ish sketchbook. It's a Strathmore gray tone sketchbook, by the way. I'm really enjoying it so far. So I decided let's document my new hobby in this sketchbook. Let's make a go of this. Let's see how this goes. So that's where we're at. This plant in particular is my fiddle leaf fig. I'm sure a lot of plant owners have them or have their, had their hearts broken by them. I haven't had any issues with this particular plant so far, but I've only had this one for only two months. It has put out new growth, so that's very, very exciting. It's some of the lower leaves are in kind of rough shape because I got it from a big box store, so I don't ne necessarily think it was in the best shape when I got it, but it's putting out new growth. The leaves are relatively upright, although in this drawing you'll see the leaves are flopping, the bottom one's a little bit, so it's probably in need of a little bit of water. 
I am working from reference photos for all my own plants for this project. And right now, I am just doing the pencil sketch. Ultimately, I will line this with ink. And I tend to, in these sketchbook spreads, split it up. I try to have some sort of overall image. And, and this strategy has evolved over the, the time I've spent in this sketchbook. But I try to have at least one line work element. I'm really enjoying the inks that you'll see later in my fountain pen. Um, I'm really enjoying that process of lining something. But I also try to include a full color of at least one element, if not two. Like if the plant flowers, I'll try to do that. This plant in particular, it does flower, but not indoors, typically. It's very, very rare for it to flower or fruit. Um, in the wild, it does fruit and flower. But I always try to include a full color element, at least one, if not a full plant, a full color. But I've realized that just takes, depending on the in intricacy of the plant, it takes a very, very, very long time to do a full color of the entire plant. And I really like the idea of mixing in the line work. But in general, that's what I'm trying to do with each of these sketchbook spreads, is provide line work, some full color, which again, I'm not, Color pencil is not my forte. It's something I'm learning as I go. It's been a thing for sure. There have been some lessons that I have learned. I feel like I've gained a decent amount of experience with colored pencils. But back to the subject of the fiddle leaf fig. This plant was one of my wishlist plants. I actually specifically had a pot set aside for this plant before I had acquired the plant, knowing that eventually I would find one at a reasonable price. Um, this particular one is about maybe three feet tall at this point in time. And it's a plant that likes a lot of light. It needs like six plus hours of sun per day. And, and it needs a lot of water. A decent amount of water, for sure. Um, you can tell, uh, as I mentioned previously, when the leaves start to droop a little and they're not kind of upright, that usually means it needs water. I try to underwater rather than overwater because a lot of my pots, and I, I hate to admit this, they don't have drainage holes. I haven't drilled them or, yeah, like I didn't have the right drill bits or I just didn't take the time to do it and I said, screw it and I just did it. And so far, I haven't really lost any plants due to root rot. Uh, I'm just getting lucky, but again, I think it's because I don't give a huge amount of water at once. I give them enough so that there's not a whole lot of water sitting at the bottom of the pot. But this plant, I, you know, I try to water every four to five days or when it starts to look a little droopy. And so far, it's been working. Um, but again, I've only had it two months, so we will we'll see. Hopefully, I can keep it alive. I do have it in a, we have a sunroom and it's not a south facing window that it's in, but it is at a corner of two major windows. That one is north facing and one is west facing. And it gets a pretty goodly amount of light through the day. And so far it's been fine, but I will absolutely keep an eye on it. And when winter comes, so I might move it into the front south facing window just to help it out a little bit. And um, as you can see, I did start doing the line work here and unfortunately it's gonna cut out because I did have an unfortunate experience filming this where when I went to ingest all of the footage from my camera, I found out that one of the files was corrupted, which happened to be the remainder of the line work. I had switched camera angles and filmed the rest of it. And when I did a quick Google search, trying to figure out why my camera, I've never had this problem with before, would have a corrupted file, I find out that the manufacturer of my SD card that I was using, which is a nice SD card for the record, uh, 
has a recall on the card because of that exact issue. Some of the files might not get recorded properly, they end up corrupted, so apologies for not catching the rest of that. That was really unfortunate, very frustrating, but it's more of the same of what you saw. <laughs> not overly interesting. I am lining this with uh, a Pilot Metro. I believe this is a fine point. I don't remember. At most a medium point. And I am using, I really love this ink. It's Stormy Gray by J. Herbin. It's part of their anniversary collection. I think it's the anniversary 1670 ink collection. And it has gold flecks in it, which later on in the video, when I do some more of the writing on the page itself, you'll see I had stored the pen um, with the nib down after lining this and when you start writing with it again after storing it that way, it gets all the gold flecks settle at the bottom and it gets really metallic, which is kind of fun. But I just think it has a really nice nice color and it's nice to have a little bit of sheen. It kind of breaks up the, the monotony of the ink a little bit. Uh, but I do use this ink on, uh, I think I've used it on almost every single uh, sketchbook spread in this book. And I really like it. Um, finally getting to some colored pencil here. I, I start by just um, blocking in the basic colors. I usually, because I'm, I started, as far as working with color, I started with oil painting. I tend to work dark to light, um, which... I think it's a pretty common way of working with oils, so for me it's kind of made sense, you know, colored pencils, I'm going to be layering. Um, I've also noticed that some of the colored pencils, which I'm learning, again, I'm learning as I go, um, some of the colored pencils layer better and you can get different colors by blending in specific orders and I've noticed I like to start with the darker colors because the lighter ones tend to layer better. That's not true. That's not a blanket statement. That is not true of ever, of other colors, which when it gets to the sketchbook spread uh, or sketchbook tour, I will, of course, sh point out some issues I've had with previous spreads that ended up being kind of a disappointment because I over, over blended and couldn't layer any more color on top and just certain pigments will layer better on top of others it's just it's a learning process with this medium and um i've learned this is what works best for me is to start with some light light pressure blocking in basic colors with some where the shadows are gonna be where the the veins of the leaf are and working from there layering as i go um i have been running through a lot of I've never, I haven't quite finished both of these color pencils, but if, if you'll notice, I do have them in a pencil uh, holder. Um, the two main ones that I'm using, the, I believe it's an apple green and a um, dark green for this. Um, I'd have to go check. But they are getting pretty low and I did buy some backups just because I am plowing through green, what with doing all of the plants. Um, in the sketchbook, but they actually, these, I, I recommend these colored pencils. I don't have a whole lot of experience again, but the ones I have, which are the Prismacolor Premier, are really nice. They blend, for the most part, really well. Um, sorry about the focus issues. Next time I won't, when I'm recording this, I didn't think about it. I won't use autofocus. It keeps jumping between my hand and the page and a bit unfortunate, but again, learning process so but I do recommend these Prisma colors and it's just a matter of just going back and forth between the different colors to get the the values right and fix any mistakes where I before I get to the point where I'm burnishing which um, is where you essentially blend the colors so well press them into the texture or surface of the paper enough that you can't really add any more and 
I'll point it out later in the video, but you, you can see when I get to a different camera angle after I burnish that you're gonna see like a sheen on the colored pencil portion um, where you can't really add any more pigment to it because I've burnished it fully. But yeah, it's just a matter of going back and forth with the colors until everything looks right. And yeah, but I really enjoy this process. And it's really fun because um, after I finish with the colored pencils and burnishing everything, I, I go to like Wikipedia, other websites um, for information on the plants. I find out the scientific name, the basic care, because a lot of these I, I've never really looked it up other than the basics. So it's really fun to see like where they come from, where, um, where they were originally cultivated at, if they can fruit or flower, because a lot of them I didn't even know could do so. And it's just, it's a good way to flex your creative muscles, art muscles, and also learn at the same time. It just seemed like a great bonding experience with the plant, as weird as that sounds. But I have noticed that some of the plants unfortunately started to go downhill mind you i did start this project in january or the end of december i believe because so i did take i started this project when i took a week off week and a half off of work i just took all client work everything kind of around christmas and since it was a pandemic i didn't travel anywhere i didn't go see family or anything like that so when i started a um a lot of the plants they go dormant or struggle a bit in winter and I, I, I noticed when I started the project that it seemed, uh, it, I'm sure it was just coincidence this time of the year, but it seemed like as soon as I finished drawing or making a whole sketchbook spread on a plant, it would start to go downhill, which is, to me it was almost like they're cursed, like the sketchbook is a curse, but I also realized it's just because it's winter and none of the plants have fully died that I have drawn so far, just some were a little more dormant or beat up um, and they're mostly on track now thankfully thankfully so I'm just gonna let some music play um, my voice is a little nasally right now I'm a little stuffed up I just got back from walking the dog and I have allergies so right now it's spring and there's pollen everywhere and mold in the air and I'm just gonna let some music play um, until we get a little later on in the video. So, enjoy.
So now I've hit the point where I've, I've finished laying in um, all the pigment uh, I was planning on laying in, and now I'm just using a tortillon to blend everything together, which I don't mind the paper texture shining through, but it's really satisfying to go back in and just smooth everything out a little bit, clean up some of the rough ed edges, and just make the majority of the paper texture just kind of fade away. I, I think it really makes the, the piece pop off the page a little bit more. Um, it's just really satisfying. But after I do that, um, what I use, because my handwriting is, is absolutely awful, um, I just use this little stamp set. Um, it's just lowercase school letters. I always stamp out the, uh, the scientific name of the plant. Underneath I use my same pen I used earlier, same fountain pen, same ink. But as you can see, it's much it's got much more sheen to it this time um, because, as I mentioned previously, I left it nibbed down. That way it's nice and shiny for the next stuff that I write. And then I always use this time to Google basic care instructions, look up the wiki, find out more information that I didn't know about the plant. And um, I always write the care instructions with the same ink, just the basic, how much light it needs what kind of soil, how often to water, if it's susceptible to drafts or cooler temperatures, things like that. Um, and again, my handwriting is atrocious, so please ignore most of that. Um, and then I always go back in with the white jelly roll. And this is the uh, 0.05 tip, I believe. Um, it's kind of difficult to see here, but that's okay. because. Again, the handwriting's awful. And I just, I like to go around and use the artwork as the borders or the edges for the text. And I fill out all the extra information that I found on either Wikipedia or any other websites that have good information. I like knowing where the plant was originally cultivated, um, where it's native to, um, how it performs, it grows in the wild versus indoors, if it can flower or fruit, or if it's toxic to people or pets. So yeah, I just, I like writing out this kind of information. Um, it really helps me learn more about the plant and educate myself on it. And that's, that's about it. That's, that wraps up the spread. The text is always the last bit and Thank you so much for joining me on this first art video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any feedback, if you'd like to see more, or if you'd like to see something different. Or let me know if you'd like to see any of the other pages in the sketchbook. I am hoping to release a video about once a month, but I get overloaded with work sometimes, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, feel free to follow or subscribe, you know, thumbs up if you'd like. And I hope to hear from you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, or week, month, even year. Um, thank you. <laughs>